Hey Beth Rehabbers, how are you guys doing today? Um, today is a topic that we're going to be chatting about looking after ourselves and I'm really excited to chat to Amy Hesbeck, she's here to join me. Welcome Amy. Hello Megan, thank you so much and welcome everyone. Um, I'm uh, coming to you from the United States, from the East Coast and it's morning here so good morning and good afternoon to the rest of you. Um, I guess Megan wanted me to introduce myself. I'm a physical therapist and um, also CCRP and CCRT certified. I've been practicing uh, for over 20 years with animals as well as with people. I've kind of balanced my practice um, amongst the two and gone back and forth depending on um, my my patient load and my interest and, and focus where I feel like mentally I need to be. Um, I also have um, achieved a certification in Pilates and I found that through Pilates, I've been able to maintain um, my functional ability as a therapist and as a rehab practitioner. And, you know, so this topic is actually very pertinent um, to me. Actually, it's pertinent to every single one of us. Um, but, you know, I've discovered some ways to help me to, to stay strong and to stay active and, and to continue to work clinically um, rather than delve completely into the administrative side of, of rehab. So, so thank you for having me. Thanks, Amy, for coming online. And welcome to all of you guys that are, are here. Um, give us a thumbs up or heart so that we know that you guys can hear us. We really want to, to learn from one another because I think everyone does things differently. And so this is going to be a discussion. And obviously, we're going to be getting some advice from Amy. Um, but you guys are welcome to put your comments on. Let us know what you guys do to keep yourself strong. Um, and when we're talking about some of the, the things that maybe um, impact on us, and you know, we're going to go through a number of different things. And just before we went live now, I was just telling Amy about I'm struggling a lot with my neck. I'm actually talking um, when I'm working on the computer. And um, we just said, well, that's actually another thing is that sometimes we have a workstation where we write notes. Um, so it's not actually just where we're treating our patients. We also need to look at every single place where we are doing work um, and make sure that we're protecting ourselves and, um, you know, looking at ways in which to help our bodies to get through the day because what we do is really physical. Um, and should we, should we start off talking about um, treating where we treat our patients? So I was one of those people who used to treat on the floor. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when I'd seen, I mean, there are some days that I used to see 12, 13 patients. Um, you know, treating on the floor really takes its toll. And, you know, I had the mindset where I was so worried about the, the dog or the cat. I wanted them to be 100% comfortable. And I really didn't feel like when they were on a table that they were. They used to shake. Obviously, they had those sort of um, memories of when they're at the vet. And as a vet myself, when I used to do normal veterinary work, it's obviously easier, especially when you've got a small patient, to have them on the table because, you know, you can, you can examine them a lot easier. But for what we're doing and when we're treating our patients, we really want them to be relaxed. Um, to, in order for us to be able to do what we do, them sitting being tense um, doesn't help us. How do how do you treat? Are you are you on the table or do that's, you? You know that's a really good point. I actually treat in the home now, and so usually I am very much on the floor, um, or you know hovering over their dog bed or cat bed. Um, a lot of times with the smaller pets, if they're allowed up on the furniture, we're you know up on the couch or up on the bed. Um, you know, and it's so hopefully that's a very comfortable position for them. But you make a really great point that I think we as as practitioners, as clinicians, we're really caregivers. And so a lot of times we think about our patient first and we don't think about ourselves first. And rather, we should really reverse those roles sometimes and we should think about our environment relative to our bodies and what's best for us. And then, you know, cater to the patient and their comfort level as well. You know, the metal veterinary um, clinical tables are certainly ring true for the, the pet in that they get nervous, they get anxious, they, they associate that with 
you know, shots and exams and things like that. But a uh, previous facility that I worked at, we made a point of getting a massage table or um, like a physical therapy plinth or a treatment table. It's soft topped. Um, you know, we can throw a blanket down on it as well to protect from the nails, but it puts them in a better position for us. Um, you know, sometimes even the littlest ones, I might sit in a chair and set them in my lap and work with them in my lap. Mm -hmm. And so, um, or if the, the owner can hold them in their lap and I can still access what I need. Um, so I think, you know, one thing that I've learned over time is, you know, to move my environment and create the environment for me, not just for my patient. Um, you know, so thinking about how I can be most efficient, effective, but then also safe for my body. Yeah, I, I must say, like for me, one of the things that I used to really worry about is especially those dogs that were quite nervous and quite strong. And um, when they're on the table, like if you've got a dog that's just had a post-operative cruciate and it's on the table, and yeah. um, sometimes you treating them, maybe you're at the back end, and you know, at usually you know you'd love to have a handler there, but sometimes it's the owner who's holding, and if they don't do what they're supposed to be doing, the dog jumps off. Yeah. Um, and then we have complications. I think that's another reason that I was sort of preferred to have them on the floor. Exactly. Um, I knew that they, they weren't able to, to get hurt. Yeah, and I think when we have the patient on the floor, you know, they're considering our own body position as well. So I tend to sit with my legs kind of swooped over to the right side. And I have to stop and think about that and say, okay, for the last patient, I was sitting with my legs to the right. Now I need to sit with my legs to the left. Or can I lie down on my stomach and work instead of being in a flexed position throughout my day? Um, so a lot of it is looking at the alternative or the opposite position. And, you know, it may not be comfortable initially, but over time, just uh, making our bodies accommodate to those um, symmetrical positions. You know, we have to think about what are our goals for our patient? You know, those might be some movement goals for ourselves as well. Um, you know, and, and utilizing, you know, like pillows and bolsters and blankets to help support ourselves when we're in a position on the floor. Um, you know, I, I have a friend who, you know, later in his career, he wore knee pads because he knew he was, you know, crawling around on the floor all day long and it wasn't so hot for his knees. And who could blame him for that? I mean, it would be great to have a, a nice flooring that was more forgiving, but, you know, he found the next best, best solution. So, um, you know, we're, we're creative people. I think, um, sometimes we have to think outside the box. Yeah. And it's obviously not only when we're treating our patients, it's also maneuvering them around. So oh, yeah. when we have a paralyzed, um, <laughs> patients and, um, I mean, how, what do you, what do you recommend for therapists, you know, to, to try and keep them some keep themselves strong? Like uh, you obviously pro Pilates and I've done Pilates, um, many times actually, but I was never very consistent with it. Right. And, um, you know, I've got a bad back, so I, I can actually recall at one time having to get a locum in, mm -hmm. um, because I was in such agony, I actually couldn't treat. So I would sit there and communicate, but then the locum would be doing the treatments oh. for me. Um, it got that bad. So it's so important for us to keep strong. So what is your recommendation? It is. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's, it's finding that thing that helps you and that you can be consistent about consistent with schedule and consistent with, you know, the time of day that, that you you're active or exercise. I mean, I do love, I love to run and um, do Pilates and, but I know that I need other things. I need to cross train. Um, and I need sometimes little things that I can fit in. So, you know, even between patients, you know, can I go through like a downward dog series, like a yoga series and knowing that I'm taking my body through various positions that are, opposite those flexed positions, I'm getting into extended positions. Um, you know, how do I stretch my shoulders? Um, can I get into a, a deep squat and, you know, kind of hold that sumo squat for a period of time to just kind of let my back release, um, even just getting onto my stomach and, and pressing up for a little bit. Um, so the little things that we can fit in between appointments, that's all well and good um, and certainly important, especially when you have a long day. But 
you know, are you starting your day with a walk or with a yoga class, um, you know, with CrossFit, which is, you know, huge here in the States, um, you know, something that is, is causing you to wait there, getting your heart rate up, um, using your body weight as resistance or other props as resistance. Um, you know, that's key for keeping our bones and, and our ligaments and joints strong. Um, you know, thinking of those activities that we prescribe for our, for our pets and for our um, patients, yeah. what are we going to prescribe for ourselves? You know, if we step back objectively and look at, okay, this is the problem that I have. What would I ask my patient to do? What would I ask my client to do? Um, and, and prescribe yourself an exercise program. Yeah, and I think a lot of the problem is, like you say, you know, you're often sitting in exactly the same position mm -hmm. continuously. So you're either leaning forward your legs to one side because you do find there's a certain way in which you sit that is more comfortable. So I was exactly the same. I used to sit with my legs to the side. And then I remember sometimes standing up, you know, and I just feeling that creep in my back. I was just like, oh, like straighten up. You know, um, so the thing about that too is that, you know, when our patients have been sitting for a long period of time, they get themselves up and they stretch and they have no qualms about like doing this lovely stretch and, you know, twisting and turning and doing what feels right. And we are just, we're, we're so, I don't know, reserved, I guess, in that it's, it's not a sign of weakness for us to get up and stretch and to move. It, it's what our body needs and, and we should feel free to do that. Um, so yeah, I agree with you on that. And we've got to get out of those positions sometimes and, and, um, work in a, a different direction. So another place is in the underwater treadmill. So yeah. I remember just my back absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Me so, yes. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's hour after hour. I mean, you almost, you know, one of your goals might be for your patient to, you know, be able to walk or trot in the treadmill for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And you're like, no, I really don't think we need that to be our goal today because I don't think my back's going to be available to tolerate it. So, um, you know, I, I had a, um, oh gosh, I mean, we had a ages ago, the Ferno treadmill and the Hydrophysio or the West Coast treadmill. And I found that I actually liked the narrower treadmill better because I could brace my body against it. You know, there are seats and, and different accommodations, but I felt that those were a little cumbersome and they got in the way, especially when there was a bigger animal in, in the treadmill. Um, you know, I would use the body weight or the, um, the buoyancy to help, you know, support my body weight as well, but also use the treadmill itself, you know, even sitting against the back wall. Um, you know, definitely getting those quads nice and strong and, and, you know, paying attention to my back posture. It's so easy to come into that flex position and that just puts more strain on our backs and on our own discs. So, um, and our shoulders, not much less our necks and knees, but, um, you know, can we change our position in the treadmill and, you know, hold our patient or whatever we need to do to facilitate our patient, you know, in a safer way. And, you know, we'd tag team each other as well, you know, the technicians and, and other therapists and, you know, hey, do you mind getting in the treadmill for this patient? You know, I can help from the outside or whatever. Um, you know, the body mechanics in the water treadmill are probably the most difficult, I think. Um, and it's not really fair to say, OK, you're 20 years old. You can get in there <laughs> instead of me at 40. Um, you know, it's, yeah. it, it's share and share alike. But I think any posture that we hold for any length of time, that's going to increase our risk of injury and it's going to increase, um, you know, the stresses on our tissues. So, you know, if you look at the cumulative time that you're in that posture and that poor posture, you know, we really need to reverse it for, you know, at least half that length of time. So, you know, if you have to be in a bad posture, being in that bad posture for a short period of time is certainly better than longer. Um, and then, you know, thinking about, I know with Pilates and yoga, we talk a lot about the core muscles and the powerhouse, but, you know, engaging that core to support the rest of the body, um, is so important. Yeah, definitely. I can actually remember a practice that I locum at in the UK. One of the nurses was a Pilates instructor and, um, they used to actually every morning, 
um, and it wasn't every morning, maybe it was like three times a week, but everyone would arrive early and she would give like a mini Pilates class in the reception area. And um, the people in the practice would come and yeah. do Pilates there. Um, so that's something to think about maybe as a team, you know, maybe, um, you know, you, you find somebody to actually do Pilates, do it all together and just focus on building that core strength um, and yeah, strengthening, strengthening and, and, and growing strong together. Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I was talking to someone recently and we were talking about like the core muscles and how important it is to have, have that, you know, those strong core muscles. And we talk about this with our clients and our patients too, right? You know, this is a lot of our therapeutic exercise. Um, but the parallel that was made was, you know, having a weak core and trying to, you know, run or jump or do other activities. It's like shooting a cannon from a canoe, you know, the canoe is very wobbly. And if it's wobbly and you shoot that cannon, that's, you know, very, very strong, um, you're going to capsize the canoe. So again, you know, if you're trying to run or trying to, you know, chase around a, uh, your cruciate patient, or even, you know, your down patient in a cart, and your core is weak, then, you know, something's going to give, um, unfortunately, it, you know, we talk about risk of injury um, and injury prevention. I mean, that's really not something that we can prove or that we can do, but we can make our bodies more resilient to the stresses of our day. And, and certainly, you know, working in animal rehab, that's a very physically stressful day, um, every day, day after day. And we, you know, we try to work as much as we can, we try to be as productive as we can. And we work long days, and we work many days at a time. Um, we're really tired, you know, physically and mentally. And a lot of times, you know, our physical activities, the, the ones that we enjoy, um, take second fiddle to our work and to the normal stresses of our day. So it's really important for us to make that a priority, you know, if anything, for the longevity of our, our careers and, and for us to be able to enjoy the time when we're not working. You know, it's no fun if you have a migraine or a backache when on your day off and you have to nurse that yourself back to health um, so that you can be prepared the next day for work. So, Yeah, it's so true. I'd love to hear from all of you guys that are online um, and listening. Um, what do you guys do to keep strong? Is it Pilates? Do you do running? Um, do you do core exercises? Are you maintaining your bodies? Because it's often something that we forget about. We forget about ourselves. We put our patients first um, and we don't practice what we preach. Um, so I'd love to, to hear from you guys. I think we've got a, a comment here. Somebody said, I used to do the same um, thing. It's obviously talking about the stretching, spending a few minutes at lunchtime or towards the end of the day just doing some gentle stretches and through the day, just doing a few simple muscle activation exercises as I go. Um, yeah, that's, it's so important. I must say it's something that um, I never really did. Um, and I just used to go from one, one appointment to the next. But I think, like you say, is finding people that you can tag team with or just scheduling your appointments so that you're not continually in the same position all the time, you know, try and swap around a little bit and, maybe take a half an hour break to do some paperwork. Um, and that's where, where we also want to chat is about our workstations, Amy. Um, yeah. You know, I can remember when I first opened my practice, I just, I went to a secondhand shop and I bought a table and a chair and it definitely wasn't the most ideal table and chairs, but that's where I used to sit. Um, and, you know, it's important that we protect ourselves even when we're writing notes and working on the computer. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think you mentioned too, you know, just taking a break and working on notes, but also we should, um, you know, take a break. I know mindfulness and meditation, all that, you know, those big buzzwords, but I think that we're more productive if we can take that mental break. And sometimes um, I'm not great when it comes to, um, you know, meditating, my mind wanders, I'm, I'm not so focused. Um, but even just taking that break and doing some of those like gentle muscle contractions, like isometrics or graduated relaxation of our muscles, you know, that can do a lot for our minds and our bodies um, to prepare us for the rest of our day. 
Um, but yes, again, you know, the workstation, um, you know, as little or as much as we might be on the computer, you know, we need to take the time to adjust it to fit ourselves. You know, if you're doing it, if you're standing at a desk, that's all well and good. But, you know, are you standing and hunched over and flexed, you know, is, are your, your hands supported? Um, is your, your neck jutted out or, you know, kind of tucked back? you know, is your screen directly at eye level? Um, you know, all of these things are, are so very important. And, um, you know, for you to make accommodations for yourself and to support yourself is really should be a priority. You're no good to your patient or your client if you're not healthy and you're not well. Um, you know, and so we need to think about our musculoskeletal health, um, you know, as, you know, having the flu or, you know, some other, you know, internal medicine issue. Um, you know, we really do need to take care of our bodies throughout our day. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to be happy when we're 60 or 70 years old and, and we're still achy from, you know, hunching over a dog in the underwater treadmill or, um, you know, chasing around a dog in a cart and, you know, crawling around on our knees. Um, you know, there, there are ways obviously to, to accommodate and to, um, modify, um, uh, to, to be yeah. healthy. So, yeah. The other thing I was thinking about is just making sure you have equipment to help you and um, things like harnesses, you know, um, so that you're not bending down continuously to pick a dog up off the floor. Um, wheelchairs when you're doing uh, rehab and exercises with them to help you um, to support them. Just making sure you have all the equipment that, that helps you to be able to hold your body in the correct position. So that you're not continually bending over and picking picking dogs up. Absolutely, I do think you know. I think that that's probably um, part of the reason why we use the peanut balls so much. I mean, I think initially, you know, is that down dog or that hemiparetic dog that isn't standing. You know, how do we get them to stand and wait bear for ten minutes, fifteen minutes? Like, get that peanut ball underneath. We don't need you know to be lifting them or carrying them everywhere. Um, you know, get them supported, you know, and support our own bodies as well. Um, but I agree, equipment is is key, um, you know, being creative with your equipment. And, you know, it, it's tough because then our tiny little rehab room turns into this storage closet of equipment because our patient size varies so much. But, um, but really, you know, those are such important things, you know, even rolling up blankets and um, and towels and things to, to help to support the patient's body and to support our own bodies too. Um, you know, yoga blocks are great. You know, you can use them for so many different things. Um, all of the inflatable, you know, um, physio rolls, physio balls, you know, those types of things can be great as well. So um, even stools and benches, you know, like use those to sit on um, and just to change your position when you're on the floor even just sitting on a yoga block, it seems kind of silly, but it just gets your hips and your body in a, a different position and might support your back a little bit better than sitting directly down on the floor, um, so especially if you have some tight muscles. So. Do you know what I saw? I was um, and in Pittsburgh Bay in um, Cape Town in South Africa, or not Cape Town, it's in the Western Cape in, in South Africa for the Equine Symposium. It was a conference with three international lecturers. And I, I did a little tour and I actually saw what they had, which was, I thought was really, really cool. It was like a, basically a wooden block with three wheels underneath that yeah. you can sit on yeah. and move around. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually something I was thinking about that guy with the knees. Maybe he needs yeah. one on his knees. You know, he can slide yeah. over and move over. Because yeah, we put um, wheels. like skateboards and, you know, which only go kind of this direction. But then there are these little gym scooters or you can even make it yourself. But um, it's like a little seat with um, with four wheels. Um you know, sometimes we'll we'll wander around the office and find the best office chair, you know, and borrow that for a period of time, um, you know, either to sit on or to kneel on. So, yeah, definitely go yeah. shopping. <laughs> find, yeah. Oh, find tools. Well, get your, your dad or your grandpa or someone to make. Sometimes we've got some family members that are very nifty that can make things for us. Yeah. Um, so get someone to, to make something for you. I mean, in, in my mind, I think like an adjustable type of platform that has got wheels yeah. on it can go up and down depending oh, yeah. on the size of the 
of your of your patients. I think it'd be great. You know, what sometimes we just if you can just put your bottom on something and then your feet on the ground still, even if yeah. your feet are bent and low, um, yeah. you're not bending over as much, you know. Yeah. Um, exactly. back. Yeah, necessity is the mother of invention, we say, and you know, and especially in a field like this. Um, you know, having done this work for 20 years, it it it, it can wear and tear on you for sure. And um, it's not for the faint of heart. I, I admire so many of my veterinary colleagues in that, you know, they're up and down off the floor, they're in, you know, such challenging positions and then, you know, are lifting and carrying and, you know, I the the job description and the um, the requirements physically are, are incredible. It's, it's pretty amazing. So, Amy, thank you so much. Thanks for, for those of you that have come online to listen. Those of you that are watching the recording, if you have any comments, if you want to share with us how you keep your cell strong, if you have any questions, um, please post them in the comments. Um, Amy and myself will come online and have a look at the data to see if we can answer. But Amy, thank you so much for coming thank online just to, to, to talk to us and just to keep you. us. Very good. Thank you, everyone. It was so nice to meet all of you. And um, I look forward to your comments. Yeah, and I think the take-home point for me is just to look after yourselves, think about yourselves, right. um, and just keep that core strong. Um, that cannonball thing in the, in the canoe um, really uh, resonated with me because um, I'm actually a canoeist, so oh, I know all about you know, falling you know, out of the canoe. Getting a cannon from that canoe, do you? <laughs> no, keep that core strong, and yeah, keep your body yeah. healthy for sure. Excellent. And Thank you. So much. Much. Canoeing is actually a very good exercise to keep you strong. Yeah. Yeah. Canoeing. It's really, Absolutely. really good. All right. Sounds like a great idea. We should all go for a canoe ride. Excellent. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.